as we talk about the adrenergic synapse, uh, we'll talk about some of the basic components of what uh, makes a functional synapse. Here we have an axon, uh, which uh, leads into the presynaptic axon terminal, um, which is this big circle here on the left. It's going to describe a lot of the components of uh, what happens uh, within uh, adrenergic uh, synaptic physiology. Over here we have a postsynaptic cell. Um, and down here we have a uh, synaptic gap, this whole area in between. So um, pay a little mind to the art. Um, hopefully the content uh, will somewhat make up for um, my lack of drawing ability. So the reason we talk about uh, synaptic physiology uh, as it, re it relates to uh, pharmacology is because uh, it's important to know the steps um, that occur um, for um, this because uh, a lot of the drugs that are administered and given um, affect various uh, components along the, the pathway here. And if we don't understand the physiology behind it, we'll never truly understand um, what makes uh, certain drugs work, why they work, and um, where exactly they work um, as it relates medically. So um, just like the dopaminergic and the uh, noradrenergic synapse, uh, we start out with tyrosine, uh, which is the basic amino acid that we find in our diet. Um, tyrosine, uh, it comes out of the food that we eat. We eat the food, it goes, we break it down into our, uh, in our stomach, and it ends up in the exocellular space. Um, we also have uh, phenylalanine, which is a, a source of tyrosine within our diet too. And uh, this is broken down if, um, by phenylalanine hydroxylase. Um, and obviously, if we have a deficiency in this, we can't uh, make tyrosine, and we have to have tyrosine supplementation. Um, in order to uh, live um, a viable life. Um, so tyrosine makes its way into the cell through a specific tyrosine transporter. And uh, so this helps bring the tyrosine from the extracellular space into the cytoplasm of the presynaptic terminal. Um, once inside the presynaptic terminal, um, the tyrosine is then uh, broken down by uh, tyrosine hydroxylase. And uh, tyrosine hydroxylase um, converts the tyrosine into L-DOPA. L-DOPA, uh, we also know it as uh, levodopa, um, or by the, the longer name, which is a 3,4-dihydroxyphenylalanine. And um, so the levodopa um, is then uh, converted and broken down even further by L-aromatic amino acid decarboxylase. Um, we also know this as uh, dopa decarboxylase, and sometimes you'll just see it as um, uh, just aromatic uh, amino acid. Um, so it's written a, a number of different ways, uh, depending on what source um, you really uh, are looking at. So L-dopa is broken down um, by the uh, aromatic amino acid decarboxylase into dopamine. And uh, so this is where the noradrenergic, the adrenergic, and the dopaminergic cells, um, they're all pretty much the same as long as this transport process uh, comes along. And so we have dopamine, and um, at this point is where we need to package it. And so the dopamine uh, is stored in something that we call a vesicle. Um, there's a, a lot of the vesicles in um, these uh, synapses. And it is brought into these little vesicles, uh, little holding cells, um, through what's called the VMAT transporter. The VMAT transporter is a, a couple of types, uh, VMAT 1 and 2. Uh, stands for uh, vesicular monoamine transporter. Um, dopamine is brought in by the VMAT 2 transporter, uh, specifically. And um, at that point in time, um, is uh, a couple things happen. Um, so within the adrenergic cell, um, and where those are located is typically, um, and most predominantly in, within the adrenal medulla, the chromaffin cells, um, the dopamine is converted um, uh, into norepinephrine. And it's converted into norepinephrine um, by dopamine, beta-hydroxylase. Um, and so, kind of got a scribble there. 
mess that one up. Let's make it a little bigger. So, so we got our dopamine, and it's broken down by dopamine beta hydroxylase into norepinephrine. And so, within the vesicle um, of the uh, chromaffin cells or adrenal medulla cells, um, we then uh, the norepinephrine it, it diffuses out into the cytoplasm. And that's when a couple things happen. Um, so when we're out in the cytoplasm, um, the glucocorticoids that we make in our adrenal cortex um, will actually um, come over into uh, the adrenal medulla and it will uh, induce the synthesis of an enzyme called um, PMNT, which uh, stands for uh, phenylthalamine and methyltransferase. And what that does is it basically um, it, it helps the methylation of norepinephrine into epinephrine. At that point in time, um, the epinephrine is able to be transported via the VMAT transporter, the same transporter, um, back into uh, the vesicle for holding, um, where it is uh, available um, to be uh, stored and released on demand. Um, so. How we release the epinephrine into our synaptic gap is um, by way of uh, an action potential that comes down through the axon and um, stimulates um, multiple um, voltage-gated calcium channels um, that are embedded on the uh, plasma membrane of the presynaptic axon terminal. So stimulation of these voltage-gated calcium channels um, will actually cause an influx of calcium from the extracellular space into the cytoplasm of the cell and that will induce uh, the vesicle to move over and fuse to the uh, presynaptic um, uh, the presynaptic uh, axon terminal um, the plasma membrane and at that point in time uh, the vesicle will break open it will release the contents, which is in this case, epinephrine, into the synaptic gap. So now we have our synaptic gap. It's full of a bunch of an epinephrine or adrenaline. And a few things happen at this point. Um, one of the things that can happen is uh, the epinephrine can bind to a presynaptic um, receptor. Um, autoreceptor or heteroreceptor um, and uh, that can cause an action um, to occur. It can uh, cause multiple things and, uh, that we will talk about in uh, future videos. Um, another thing that can occur is it can both uh, bind to a uh, postsynaptic cell, uh, the receptors on the postsynaptic cell, and cause uh, whatever effect that specific receptor um, is going to um, elicit. Or, just like epinephrine and norepinephrine, it can be transported um, back into uh, the postsynaptic axon terminal. I needed a thinner line there. And so how does it get back in to the cell? Well, it can be transported in through a norepinephrine transporter or a dopamine transporter. Um, uh, it has a higher affinity for norepinephrine transporters. Um, so we'll write that one here uh, for simplicity. And um, at that point in time, uh, we are moved into the back into the cytoplasm. And a couple things can happen at this point in time. So one of the things that can happen is it can ultimately be broken down into uh, and, and metabolized. So just like uh, norepinephrine and, and dopamine, uh, monoamine oxidase, is uh, what is uh, the enzyme that will go ahead and break that down. Um, norepinephrine is specifically broken down by monoamine oxidase A. And this uh, metabolism is very similar to that of norepinephrine excluding uh, the dope gall um, step. Uh, so epinephrine is already broken down a little bit more. And so uh, MAOA um, that's found on uh, mitochondria within the cells breaks it down into uh, DOMA, which is a 3,4-dihydroxymanilic acid, 
which is an insignificant metabolite, um, or it's broken down into dopeg, which is 3,4-dihydroxyphenylglycol. Um, this is a, a metabolite that uh, is typically diffuses out of the uh, postsynaptic neuron at this point, even though we're writing it within it, and it diffuses out and is ultimately uh, metabolized um, by comet, which is a catechol methyl transferase, and it is metabolized down in a mopeg, and then down in a mopgol. Um, these are all acronyms for more big, long words that nobody really cares about and is, is insignificant. But, but the bottom line, you need to know that these are different. Um, is they're broken down systematically by different uh, stages, ultimately to uh, VMA, which is uh, vanilla mandelic acid, um, which is excreted in the urine. And just like um, uh, we talked about in the noradrenergic uh, video, um, this is helpful in the, the diagnosis if we're going to do a urine test on VMA. It's helpful in diagnosis of like pheochromocytomas or neuroblastomas. Another thing that can happen to epinephrine is uh, it can be, is as if it's transported into the cell, it can diffuse out a little bit of norepinephrine, it diffuses out automatically and is metabolized by um, a comet um, into a, a metanephrine. And metanephrine is then uh, broken down in other areas of the body um, by MAOA and then uh, down uh, again into um, ultimately VMA. Or epinephrine can be um, not metabolized and it can just be transported back into a vesicle again um, through the VMAT2 transporter. And so it can be transported back into the vesicle and um, used as usable epinephrine and upon the release of an action potential. And there you have it.